Hi, my name is Mara and I'm a PhD student at Vanderbilt Center for Rehabilitation Engineering and Assistive Technology, or CREATE. Today, I'm going to be talking about the biomechanics topic of assistive technology, restoring mobility and independence. Do you have a loved one who has trouble living on his or her own due to mobility issues? Maybe they have limited control of their left side due to complications from a stroke, or they might have lost a limb in an accident, or maybe they can't walk due to a spinal cord injury. Well, one of the key goals of our research here at CREATE is to restore the mobility and thus independence of these loved ones so that they can re-engage in daily life with confidence and safety. But how do we do that? Well, in part with the design and testing of assistive technology. But what exactly do I mean by assistive technology? This term is actually quite broad and can be used to refer to any item or system that is used to help people with disabilities perform daily tasks. Today, though, I'm going to narrow in just a little bit and talk about assistive technology as a wearable device that can replace or assist an affected limb and provides function that was lost due to some pathology or injury. And so for this definition, we have two main categories. The first is an exoskeleton. So this is a device that fits around an affected limb and aids in stability or movement. The second is a prosthesis. This device actually replaces the missing limb and provides some, if not all, of the function that was lost. Now, as you can see on the screen here, all of these devices can be made with varying levels of complexity. Many, like those on the left side of the screen, are unpowered, which means they have no electronics or motors and instead rely on rigid elements or springs to provide assistance. We often use the word passive to describe these types of unpowered devices. But many others are powered, like those on the right side of the screen. So they're equipped with motors and control architecture that allows them to provide active motion. Now note that some of these devices are for the lower limbs. So they're going to assist the user with tasks such as walking, climbing stairs, and getting up and out of a chair. While other devices are designed for the upper limbs. So they're gonna help with other common daily tasks such as unscrewing a water bottle or cutting up vegetables for dinner. Now with all of these different types and variations of assistive tech out there, you might be wondering, what is the process for designing and developing these devices? How do we do it? Well, as you can imagine, we as biomechanics researchers have many roles we can play in the development of assistive tech. First, we need to identify the problem. So by talking with potential end users, such as prosthesis users or stroke patients, we can gain insight on what mobility issues these populations are facing. We also work with clinicians such as physical therapists or prosthetists to understand the current standard of care and how assistive technology could help. We also use our gait analysis lab to assess their ability to walk, climb stairs, move around obstacles in order to understand and measure what deficiencies they have and how we can improve them. Next, we need to actually design and fabricate the device. So we might use computer aided design and 3D printing to build prototypes. And if it's a power device or robot, then more work is gonna go into the electronics and control side of things to provide that actual movement assistance. And lastly, we get to test it out. So we can compare how they walked or performed whatever task before and after we provided the assistive tech and then assess to what extent it helped them. We might use objective feedback, such as various measurements we can take in the gate lab, like knee angle, as well as subjective feedback, such as user preference they might fill out in a survey in order to draw our conclusions. So before we wrap up, let me show you a few of the devices that we've developed in lab in action. This first device here is a lower limb prosthesis. So this assistive device is for individuals who have an amputation above the knee. So they need something that can replace both the knee and the ankle joint function. In this particular device, the knee joint here is powered. So it has a motor that allows for the prosthetic knee to stay straight while the user, bear weighs on, user bears weight on it, but also can flex and extend or bend and straighten when the other foot is on the ground. The ankle joint on this device is unpowered or passive. And so it acts more like a spring to help facilitate the landing and push off of the foot during walking. Next, we have an example of a powered lower limb exoskeleton. So this device is intended for individuals with spinal cord injury, meaning that they are paralyzed from the waist down. The device can actually stand and walk 
for the user using motors at both of the hip joints and both of the knee joints. Lastly, here is another example of a lower limb exoskeleton. This time it's designed for just one joint, the knee, on just one side. So this type of device is used for individuals um, with gait asymmetries, meaning they might have muscle weakness on one side due to a stroke or other condition. So the motor at the knee joint can help the user bend and straighten, allowing them to adopt a healthier and safer walking pattern. So as you can see, it's a long and involved process, but a very rewarding one. With the help of assistive technology, now your loved one can enter the community with confidence and assurance that they can navigate daily life safely and successfully.